Colossians uh, 3, 12 said, but uh, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of, once again, mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness. Once again, that long suffering, that's that 70 times 70. Mm -hmm. That's long suffering. Peter mm -hmm. had seven times seven. That was suffering. But Christ mm -hmm. said long suffering. Mm -hmm. 70, seven times 70, 490. Forbearing mm -hmm. one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Also do ye. So if we got a we got a we got a, a quarrel, we got a uh a issue with someone, you know, sometimes people are not gonna come and apologize to us. We got to accept that everybody's not gonna come back and apologize. But nevertheless, for as much that as Christ has forgiven us and given us that seventy times seventy, we gotta also extend that extended mercy and compassion because we don't forget we don't ask the Lord to forget uh all the time, every time we make a mistake, we don't ask directly for forgiveness. Uh, but yet, nevertheless, the Lord is always still willing to forgive. Amen. Uh, verse 14 says, above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. See, look what verse 16 says. I want, I want to touch on that because that's something that's been despised in, in today's generation and, and, and the newer generation. Something that we saw when I was coming along that was something that was common. It wasn't just always the pastor that supported the word of God, but also the church mothers and the elders and other brothers and sisters. We admonish one another. We help keep each other uh, in the way. You, you just had to be at church. You could be with your family, your, your friend's house, and if you were doing something that was un, you know, that was not biblically sound or correct, they encourage uh, you to do the right thing. So the Bible yeah. said, let the word of Christ dwell in you. Let the word, we need the word in us to dwell in us richly with all wisdom that we were able to teach and also admonish, to warn one another, to warn one another in psalms and hymns. Once again, spiritual songs. This is why I'm big on the gospel songs. Songs now, these songs today are not lining up with the gospel. They're not spiritual songs. They're not lining up. A gospel song should line up with the gospel, and it should encourage us to glorify God and to to acknowledge that we need Him to help yeah. people on the right path. So, uh, and obeying His word that way we can stay in His grace, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. That whatsoever you do in word or deed, whatsoever we do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. So, whether in psalms, whether in whether, whether uh, hymns, uh, in anything that we do, word or in deeds, mm -hmm. we, we try to, to do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Not not the title, not the uh, uh, that you often see. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, you really don't see it in the New Testament. The only time you see the name, like uh, one, one, one titles is uh, the Most High God. Mm. You see, uh, God is constantly using that. These are these are that's a title, just like the Father, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. All titles of the Old Testament. The only time you see that title being used in the New Testament is when they are explaining the prophets. They are explaining things that were written of old time. So you don't see them use the name the Most High God. What we will see in the New Testament is Jesus Christ. Uh, that's why the Bible says the Book of Revelation, the Book of the, the, the Revealing of Jesus Christ. That's why it started with Him, Jesus Christ. Uh, and you see, uh, if, if any title being used in the New Testament, God Almighty, the uh -huh. Almighty. Uh -huh. That's what we see written in the New Testament. The Almighty will do all things, if anything. So uh, that's, that, that's who the knowledge, that's who the revealing has been revealed now. Now, in Old Testament, it was OK for them to use that because they didn't have the knowledge of Christ. Christ was not yet revealed to them uh, in the manner and the form that it was revealed unto us when Christ came after John. Even John did not baptize in Jesus Christ's name. That's why all of John's disciples had to be rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, OK, uh, let's go to uh, we're going to talk about uh, the. Talking about the language. Uh, uh, let me give, give me Acts. Give me Acts, the second chapter. The language which which you are born in. God is not going to compel you to speak Hebrew. Uh, all this stuff. 
uh, a lot of a lot of this stuff we got to be careful with this teaching because a lot of it is rooted uh, in bitterness. Uh, mm-hmm. the, a lot of these folks are still upset over slavery, have not forgiven when none of us have been through slavery. Our grandparents, ancestors might uh, have went through this stuff, but nevertheless, I haven't picked cotton. I haven't. I'm not going to let the, the N word offend me more than someone that actually picked cotton and been through that. If you have, have dealt with that and experienced those types of things, then I can understand why that would offend you. But I, you know, but for me, I can't get offended more than the person that actually uh, have have dealt with that. And a lot of times, too, we got to understand that Satan, that's a part of Satan's plan. Uh, he uses words. He also uses words to kind of get us off uh, off our mindset uh, of the Lord. That's why they mocked him at the cross. They stood there. They, it wasn't enough for them just to kill him. But after they, they tormented and beat him and was in the process of killing him, they stood around the cross mocking him. Said, if he be the Lord, let him come down off this cross. See, Satan knew who he was. Satan knew who he was, and he wanted him to come off that cross. Oh, I'm going to beat you, we're going to mock you, and we're going to shame you. So a part of Satan's tactics is also to shame us. So uh, so talk. he's going to use words to talk about us and stuff like that. Many of us are going to be mocked and talked about as well uh, for standing up for, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But uh, we're, we're going to start uh, real quick, uh, Acts 2, uh, 2 and 1. He said, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Everybody had this. Everybody spoke in tongues, because that's another teaching that everybody's not going to speak in tongues. Everybody in the day of Pentecost spoke in tongues. Uh, this was the, the sign and the evidence that appeared unto them. Uh, and it, this was one way also to let you know that you have received the Holy Ghost because you know if you're trying to speak one language and you're speaking and you're calling on uh, the Lord in English and uh, when you open your mouth and try to say something else, you're trying mm-hmm. to speak and something else is coming out and you know you're not doing this. This yeah. is how you know. You know for yourself that you have received the Holy Ghost and no one else got to tell you. No one got to tell you that you ought to testify. No, you know something just took place. You know mm-hmm. something just took place that, that you had no control over. So... Uh, mm-hmm. You need to know this for yourself. And then it yeah. appeared and it said upon each of them, verse four, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance, as the spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Ooh. Not just Hebrews, uh, not just uh, uh, out of one nation, but out of every nation, because the Lord has spread the Jews across the whole world because of disobedience. Uh-huh. This this slavery that happened to them, this captivity that happened to them was not because of the quote unquote white man, Spanish man, Portuguese or any other people that enslaved or took people into captivity, but because it was because of disobedience. This is why the Israelites, the Hebrews were spread across the world uh, throughout the world in slavery because of their disobedience to the Lord, because God is not a hypocrite, even as other nations did not disobey uh, obey the Lord. God brought them under bondage when Israel obeyed the Lord. So even Israel had slaves. They had uh, uh, servants and stuff that served them, but they were not hard and taskmasters over them as other nations were uh, oh. to them. But this was punishment for their disobedience. Um, speaking with other tongues, verse five, uh, and now down to verse six. Now when these, when now when this, this is this is the verse I want you guys to get to. We're going to read 6 and 8. Pay attention to 6 and 8. Now, when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. We got multiple people here that speak multiple languages, Mm -hmm. but I hear you in my own. See, what was the own language? What, what, what? Just because a man can speak multiple languages, what made his this language so particular to him? And he's talking about the language where, when they were born, when they spoke as children. Our mm. home language. What's oh. our home language? We got Cubans that come over here that might speak English, but guess what? They, they were born in Cuba. And what were they speaking over in Cuba? Spanish. Spanish. You got you got those in Portuguese that spoke, they, they speak in, uh, Portuguese uh, from Portugal and all the different uh, places of the world speak multiple languages. 
So they may come to America and they may speak one language, speak English, because why? We're in America. But when they're back home, when they're with their people, they speak their childhood language. Oh. The native tongue. Verse 7 says, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Verse 8. Verse 8. How and how hear we every man in our own tongue where when we were born? What language did your mother speak? Because nine out of ten times, if you were raised by your mom, that's the language that uh, you're going to speak. But we can't just we just can't limit it to that because why? Because everybody's not in a situation where they're blessed enough to have their mother raise them. So whoever raised that individual when they were young and as, as they began to communicate, whatever language that individual spoke to them, that's the language wherein they was taught and they were raised and they communicated with, and that's the language that they were born. Born with, and that's what they're going to speak. They're going to speak that tongue. Mm -hmm. They're going to speak that tongue. So God, God is not a God that will compel us to speak a certain language, Hebrew, and all this type of stuff. But rather, He give us. Uh, he comes to us, and He accommodate us and speak the language wherein uh, we speak. But also to note, the reason why uh, a lot of people would they will argue, they would tell us that hey. Um, uh, dealing with Hebrew and stuff like that, that there was no J in the English letter and all this type of stuff. So the name can't be Jesus. But, I, you know, we, we can go one step further. The English language was not even spoken. Not only was there not a J, there was not an A, there was not a B, there was not a C, there was not a D, there was not an E, there was no, there was no English alphabet, period. English was not spoken in those, in, back in those days. English when compared to languages, is relatively actually a new language. English is a mixture of multiple languages. It's a mixture of multiple languages. Uh, let's go to the uh, the book of uh, Luke. Mm -hmm. Luke 23. And when they had wrote the superscription above Christ's name, it was written in three languages, and English was not one of the languages. So if anybody's trying to tell you that, that Jesus was not the name, yes, we understand that. And they, they're going to tell you there was no J's and no 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 vowels. No, this. How about, tell them there was no English language. We know that. We know that. We, we, we are well aware of that. There was no English language. But the thing is, when you pray to the Lord, and this is the thing that every individual will have that's that, that, that in our lifetime, that, that are familiar with God, as you got in trouble... When you were living your life doing the things that you wanted to, when you really got in trouble and you showed up needed a prayer to come through, even if, even when you didn't go to church, what name did you pray to God for and he answered your prayer? Everybody got to have their own personal testimony concerning this. Yes. I know who I was calling on when I wasn't coming to church, when I wasn't acknowledging God. I know I called on Jesus. Jesus, Jesus got me out of trouble. That's right. Hey, Amen. Lord Jesus, I don't even want to see him start meditating on the many times the Lord brought me out. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, yes, Too many yes. times. Hallelujah. Too many times. The Lord Amen. made a way for me. Amen. All right, brother. You just got to have this experience for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't fall to let a man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Okay. That's right. When you know, you know. Oh, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Speak that what you know the Lord said. And testify mm -hmm. the things that you've seen. Mm -hmm. I, I, you, we, can, we can't go on this way on somebody else's testimony. Amen. Mm -hmm. You got to know for yourself. Hallelujah. 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 All right, um, Jesus. Verse, uh, wow, Lord. The Lord came Amen. to Israel. He yes. said, when you go against your enemies, when yes. you obey yes. me, they will have to flee you yes. seven ways. Yes. But if you disobey me, you will yes. flee them seven ways. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. The same yes. rule, the same measure yes, Lord Jesus. for every man. Yes, Lord Jesus. He still respect the person, whether Amen. Hebrew or Gentile. Hallelujah. Thank you, so God even blessed Gentiles in the Old Testament. He, he did so because that same sun shine upon the just and the unjust alike. That same rain fall down on everyone. Everyone. Amen. That's the goodness of God. Thank you. That's the goodness of God. 
Yes, Lord. But our verse 34 uh, says, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That was one of the last acts while he was in this flesh that he did before he gave up his life on this side. He forgave them, for they knew not what they, because if they known who he was, they would not have done that. They would not have done that. So it had to be done. He had to suffer this. He had to be killed. Mm-hmm. And But the Lord even forgave them for what they've done. So if the Lord can forgive them for what they've done to him, surely we can forgive people what they have done to other folks. They ain't even do it to us. They did it to other folks. We can forgive them. Mm-hmm. That's, that, that's that seven times seven that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. But in they departed his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood behold, beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, he saved others. Once again, we talked about this earlier. Let him save himself. If if he be Christ, the chosen of God. Now, he said in, in the book of uh, the fourth chapter, he said, you shall say this proverb unto me. Physician, heal thyself. But they didn't say it exactly as Christ said it. But this was what he was talking about. He saved others. Now, let him save himself. Ooh. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. And saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription, this is what I wanted, with 38, the 38th 38 verse. And the superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew, not English. Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. And once you study, when you begin to study language and begin to study the English language, you see, it's, that's why in the spelling bees, these kids are always asking the origin of that, that word, Greek or Latin. Or, 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 or certainly because then based off the origin of the word in English, it would dictate how to spell that word. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I like to watch those little spell. These little kids are good at that stuff, man. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not even going to challenge one of those children on, on English. I'm 40, 41 years old, 42. Mm-hmm. Lord, let me live it. Uh, those kids got better English. They're, they're better in English. That way I can't, I can't be trying to speak another language. I, I, I haven't not yet. I'm not yet proficient in this one language, English. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Haven't mastered this one yet. It breaks so, it up. Uh, the superscription was also written over, uh, over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. Um, give me uh, John, John, uh, the nineteenth chapter, the book of John. Same things. Same uh, thing. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, question. Question. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Even when you was going back, praise the Lord, everyone. Um, when you was going back. Um, you were saying um, about the Most High when they were speaking yeah. the Most High because look like I just kind of like started hearing that become more and more like the past maybe few years and that that seems like um you know a strange um when they would mm-hmm. instead of saying you know Jesus and and that sound like maybe something in school or or. Uh, what a teacher may say that that I just that just never uh, I just never combine that of wanting to say Most High instead of you know the name of Jesus. Well, because, because I've noticed because, even lately um they've been saying universe. They will say uh, the universe. Uh, what you, and it's like uh, where did they get this? It's like a total. Range and like, like what? What do y'all? Yes. Yeah, this is uh because th- what what's happening in the last days? This is yeah. a part of that antichrist spirit. Even though, uh-huh. even though, even uh-huh. though they're teaching from the Old Testament, they're they're explaining and they're using the title. This was the thing the Lord was upset with the Pharisees about. Not that they were not teaching the truth, that they mm-hmm. were no obeying the truth. This is what the Lord was getting. He was upset with them because he told they was they was teaching the truth, but they were not obeying the truth, and that's why they rejected. Christ, mm-hmm. and and this is what this is why it's an anti-Christ movement because they rejected Christ. So when when you're teaching and explaining uh, salvation uh, in the name, we have to acknowledge that name. It's just no, it's no different than baptizing in the, the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's another title. It's another mm-hmm. title that He built. So for us that speak English, uh, mm-hmm. and that's our native tongue, even if we don't compel another man that's born in His language. I'm not going to compel a man that speaks Spanish, that don't know English, that's not fluent in English. He's going to say, brother, uh, I feel more comfortable speaking in Spanish. 
them brothers speaking Spanish. That's why I think God for Pastor Duran, uh, Bishop Hernandez. We got those brethren that, that that their native tongue is Spanish. They can communicate with those brethren who uh, their native tongue as well is uh, that language, and they can communicate because the Lord is not bound because He got witnesses out of every nation, all people, all kindred, all tongues. The Bible says that, so we don't have to. We, all, all it is is just men trying to <laughs> reputation of themselves. That's all it is. And yeah. really, they have no understanding of themselves of what they're explaining or no teaching. Yeah. Haven't even traveled. Haven't even traveled. Yeah. Haven't even traveled. Haven't even now witnessed these things. Yeah, but, but yeah go ahead. It's not a, it's not a, a question, but it's, 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 a, it's, it's a lesson yeah. on history, right? Uh, and, and when we're talking about, you know what I'm saying, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, right? Uh, if you go time and you go into history, right? Which is one of my, my, my studies, right? You know, at first, Hebrew was, you know what I'm saying, the, the reigning, you know what I'm saying, group of people. You know what I'm saying? Then when Rome took over, you know what I'm saying, went to Greek. Because Rome was the leading uh, 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 group. And then after that, when they got conquered, they got conquered, conquered by the Latin. Follow, follow the wars. That's right. Follow the wars. You got to study the wars. And when we when we follow the wars and we study what that's why this history is written also in our Bible. Added Cersei, the Medes, the Parthians, all them, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, all these when you follow the wars, you follow Egypt, you follow all this stuff lines up with history. Even that's why when you go into the history class, a lot of things they begin to speak. Oh, hold on, I heard that before. You heard it in the church. You heard it in the church. So you begin to follow the wars, disobedience. God will rise up a nation that will come against a nation because that nation just got to the point where, man, they just ain't acknowledging God at all. So the Lord will cause yeah. captivity to come in, the children to be slaughtered, their wives to be taken and raped and killed and brought off into captivity. Uh, oh. And the men, a lot of times, the men will be slaughtered and, and they see their sons and their daughters and their wives taken over into captivity. This is what God had promised to all people that disobey him. The Bible says uh, sin uh uh, righteousness is all a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Any mm. people, because God has no respect to person. It, what He done to one, He doing to all. Right. So, right. so this is this is something that uh, well, that that you know, there's been been all throughout the scriptures. But John nineteen, uh, verse nineteen, John nineteen nineteen. Gospel, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, at verse 19. And we're talking about the superscription that were written. You know, and like, as I say, I'm not going to get into an argument over uh, over names and some other language. And I'm not going to compel nobody to speak in English that don't want to speak in English. But at the same time, that, 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 that kindness is also granted to us because we were born and we speak English. We speak English. So, uh, you know, but that's, that's a good thing about the Lord. He's not bound by language. The Lord is not bound by language. But people out of every nation that fear of God and work of righteousness, the Bible says, is accepted by him. That's what Peter said in the day of Pentecost when he was dealing with the Gentiles, dealing with Cornelius and his house and his family and his kindred. Uh, but uh, uh, John 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 19 says, And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. He wrote this title, king of the Jews, Jesus of Nazareth. The King of the Jews, so that he he didn't write uh it, write write it uh that's that's how it's interpreted in our language, but it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So if, if someone comes to you and tell you, yeah, it was originally written in Hebrew, yeah, it was really you no know, written in these other languages, yes, because that was the languages that was spoken in the in the Roman the Roman uh the Ro most Romans poor Romans spoke Greek. And those that were educated in the, in the law or the language was written in Latin. So even in, in Roman culture, if you you if you got in trouble with the law, you had to go get someone that was fluent in Latin because they spoke in Latin. So, but most of the people even under the Romans, they adapted the Greek language, so they they spoke Greek. It was common. So you would have saw more people speaking in in the, in the Greek language during that that time frame. And then you had uh, Arabs that spoke Aramaic and all that. So you you had a a, a mixture of people speaking multiple languages because of trade and all that thing that, that was going on. This title, 20th uh, verse, this title, then read many of the Jews for the place where the Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew, 
Greek and Latin. I want you to go. Let's let's pay attention to some detail that were written because it was close to the city, not in the country. As they got closer to the cities, you began to see more signs, just like just like uh, roads and stuff like that. The bigger the city, the more signs you see, the more commerce you see, the more restaurants you're going to see. Out further out, you might not have as many restaurants and stuff like that, but in the city. Man, you'll see multiple restaurants and stuff like that. 20, 20 chapters. This title then read, Many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Not English, saints. Not English. But don't don't get into no, 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 no back and forth with a person about the J and all this. Let them know, hey, you know what? English was not even spoken. It wasn't even spoken. But you got to have this personal experience for yourself. You got to know because like because the thing is, when a person calling on the name Jesus, the Bible said this has to be done by faith. A brother one time was 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 on the job and he was having a conversation with some other co-workers. And he knew that I was a believer of Jesus Christ. And when I came in, he said, oh, man, look, Sherman, Sherman Hill. He said, hey, man, uh, brother, tell these folks that 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 if you pray in the name of Jesus, that God will answer prayer. And I told him not not necessarily so. And he looked at me crazy. He was like, man, I, I thought for sure, man. Uh, you you will be with me, and uh, and I said it got to be done by faith. If a yeah. person don't have faith in that name, God is not going to answer the prayer. Mm-hmm. Anybody that approaches the Lord in any language, it must be done by faith. I believe because mm-hmm. if you're wavering, the Lord said, "Let that man, let him know, brother, let him know, mm-hmm. he ain't gonna get nothing of the Lord. Nothing. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna get nothing. You we we, we got to be sound with this." And faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how can they hear except they have a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? And the one thing God going to do before he send them is give them his word. And he's going to be sound on that. David, before he ran up on Goliath, the Lord showed him how he defeated the bear and the lion. But he didn't run up on Goliath before he had that experience. Now, Saul, before he was anointed, didn't have that type of experience in battle. He didn't have it. So when he faced Goliath, he was just like all the other brethren. He was afraid. But when God prepare a person for something, he's going to he's going to train you. Up. You're going to have some practice before it's game time. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, let's go to uh, let's go to the book of uh, another example. I want to give you the book of Revelation. Ninth chapter. Multiple languages. Multiple languages. It's all over the world. And the one thing about the word of God, it bears witness to itself. It bears witness. All right, we're going to the ninth chapter. We're coming down to the eleventh verse, but I'm going to give you some uh, for the sake of time. Whoa, wow! For the sake of time, I'm going to give you some backdrop on this uh, chapter real quick. I want to. I want to. I want to make something straight. I'm not condemning anybody that speaks another language. If that brother, but if you speak your native tongue is one language, then I might have an issue with you. Uh, and I'm gonna compel you to speak your, your native tongue. And and the thing about it, because he what the Hebrew Israelites and all the other people are teaching is not New Testament doctrine. It's not. It, it goes beyond the name. If you listen to what they're teaching, they are not teaching apostles' doctrine. They're not teaching it. That's why they can't say the name. It ain't in them to say it. The witness, the witness, the Holy Ghost is not in them to say it. That's why they can't say it. Hmm. When you begin to deal with them and begin to talk with them, you're going to know what and who you're dealing with. That's why the Bible says Satan has transformed himself into an angel of what? Light, not darkness, light. Hmm. So there's a lot of things he's going to be appearing and sounding like. Just like Peter said before he received the Holy Ghost. Lord, shall I forgive my brother seven times? Peter didn't, Peter didn't say not to forgive him. He said three times. Peter said seven times without the Holy Ghost. Oh, so my. you'll see manifestation of forgiveness and a person that don't even have the Holy Ghost. They'll mm. forgive. Don't even have the Holy Ghost. There are guys that, that, that have problems. People have problems in their marriage. They ain't even saved. And they forgive one another and move on. Well, I can't understand how so many saints say they, they ended up in the wars. But uh, mm. you got folks that they don't even believe there is a God can forgive adultery and move on in their marriage. So they got that seven times, that seven times. But the Lord say, nay, Peter, for us, though, 
seven times 70. Okay. This cannot be done without the Holy Ghost, without the love of God ruling in our hearts that is given according to Romans 5 and 5 by the Holy Ghost. You're not going to be able to take this constantly, this hurting and this suffering because you don't have the Holy Ghost to comfort you. Uh -huh. Amen. When you're being defrauded. Oh, yeah. This is why it's imperative that we receive the Holy Ghost because Amen. when we receive this Holy Ghost and this repentance, there's no now therefore no more condemnation. No oh, more. Okay. So we're not after the flesh, but we're after the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. All right, uh, the ninth chapter book of Revelation. The ninth chapter book of Revelation. Uh we're gonna we're dropping down to the eleventh verse, but there, there, there these are the plagues that the Lord is beginning to let John know that's gonna be unleashed on the earth. And we got these scorpions, we got these grasshoppers coming up out of the pit, out of out of out of, out of the dark uh pit. Uh the Bible says in verse, verse three, the locusts having locusts upon the earth, having power like scorpions to sting the earth. Uh verse four said it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass. I want to pay attention to that it was commanded. Anytime we see the word in the Bible commanded, it's because a ruler, someone having authority as Christ. He didn't speak as a scribe spoke, but one that had authority. That's why he didn't ask. That's why the Bible says he commands. He commands because he paid the price. He is our Lord. He is our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jesus Christ. That was the one in the beginning that the Father formed all the world by. The same teaching. That was commanded them that he could not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. These are the ones that have not yet accepted the salvation of the Lord. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should torment five months. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion when he strike up a man. And in those days, men shall seek death, saints. Mm. They're going to want to die and shall yeah. not find it, the Bible said, and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them because the Lord has conquered it in, in, in Revelation 1. But mm. in this day, no man shall die. Ooh. No man shall die. God shall not. So it ain't, it ain't always a blessing to not die. Okay. As the world teaches. Oh. But uh, but they, they they've been given this power. Uh, in, in verse ten, they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Verse eleven, and they had a king over them. All these these things that are going to be coming about the pit, hurting these men, they have a ruler over them, a king. Yeah. And this is the something that that's been explained more and more as we get closer to the end. How the angels have authority, and God have given certain angels authority over things. Mm -hmm. So, but but God, He is the high God that all bow to Him, even angels and men on earth, men, oh. things in heaven, all things that pertain to heaven, even angels bow to the Lord that we read in, in Philippians. Things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth all bow to the, this one God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yeah. because He would have been given all power. Verse yeah. eleven. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue have his name Apollyon. So here we got a one king, one angel over them. This king and this angel name pronounced in Hebrew is Abaddon. But in Greek, Apollyon. And when you say these names, they're spelled differently and they're pronounced differently. But we're talking about the same person. That's oh. why in, in Scripture, we see them writing Timothy name. The, it, 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 we see in the book of Timothy, we see Timothy. But then we also see uh, Timotheus. Timotheus. We see, so hold on, who is this brother Timotheus? That's, that's Timothy because it's written in another language and it's oh. being translated. It's yeah. the same Timothy, though, the same one person. So depending uh, on who is pronouncing the name and how they're pronouncing it, they may speak it in a, in a, in a, in a different pronunciation, but we yet we're still talking about the same one. Okay. So the Lord so the Lord understands this. We, uh, and and it's it just people that us that may not be familiar with language may not have this understanding. So this is the reason why, uh, you know, even in preaching, a lot of times we don't have the time to break down the history of things. We don't have the time to kind of, and this is what Bible study is for, to kind of go into this stuff and, and, and get the history, why things are. Because the Lord, whenever, whenever the Lord began to first began to deal with me and, and to save me and bring me along, uh, the Lord started teaching me the origin of things. He started, the Lord, the Holy Ghost will ask, what's the origin of this? What's the oh. beginning of this? 
not 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 what happened in 1492. Find out what happened in zero at zero. When this first began, when this first started, and then follow it all the way back up to to the point that men are beginning to discuss and what happened. That way we can under, we, we have a good understanding of why this originally took place. That's why the Lord said when they came to him concerning divorce and marriage and stuff, the Lord said this was not so from the beginning. And he went back to Adam, uh, uh, Adam and Eve. But it's mm-hmm. called, shall a man leave his mother and mm-hmm. father and cleave to his wife? So 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 that burden that God had, that all this was going back to the beginning was placed. And the responsibility of taking care of the family was placed on the man, not 50-50. Brethren, not 50-50. That burden, it, the, 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 and the Lord said, men, love your wives as Christ loved the church and yeah. gave himself. Brethren, yeah. unto death. Yeah. Unto death. Unto yeah. death. That means defend and provide. Unto yeah. death. Our children, they need it. Uh, even, that's, why, that's why the Lord talked about the lion. When a lion is defending his pride, mm-hmm. he is fighting unto death because they he know if his if he lose, his children are dead. Oh. That's the first thing that that other lion is gonna do is kill his children so that he can have children with the women that that's from his lineage. So he's fighting unto death. They are fighting, and no mother. Sometimes I even even see the female lions if they see that he's not doing well. They're jumping in and they're helping because they're fighting for their children. Mm. Mm. They're fighting for the children. If he loses, those kids are good as dead. Because eventually, even if the women can pack up together, I've seen it, and they can defend off that male, that male will wait until the females go hunt for food. They have to separate from the children then. And when they separate from the children, that's when he killed all the cubs. And when they get back from hunting, they're going to see that their cubs are dead. And they go through the process of mourning, but then eventually nature takes its course, and um, they 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 accept the new king. They accept the new king. So, uh, now nah, what time is it? Uh, about nine. Nine. Is that is that right? No, eight thirty. Okay, okay, good, good. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna pause real quick. We we finna go to the act act the fourth chapter. Do anybody got any comments? Anything you want to uh, kind of ask in, uh, based on what we just been over? So far, uh, any questions or anything you want to uh, touch on or, or me uh, go over? If not, uh, we we uh, go ahead and get start turning towards Acts the fourth chapter. And that one thing I love about the Word of God, even history, you begin to understand history. History even validates the Word of God. Many times throughout, throughout history, archaeologists, people that go and dig, scientists, have a long time trying to disprove the Bible, only to find out that it's true. Many scientists that even believe there was a God trying to disprove the Bible ended up finding out that it is true. And now they're some of the starkest believers of Jesus Christ and, and, and prove that even science bear witness to the Lord, that he is the creator and that the world did not. Uh, the world did not evolve. And that's why I'm careful about when they start talking about we got to follow the science. I'm saying, you know, uh, you know, we, we just got to stick with the Lord. And, and there are occasions that 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 we do deal with science. But when we start mixing science with faith, you're going to get in trouble because uh, we have a church called the Church of Scientology. Church of Scientology is a whole big one right down here at the end of 95. You can Google it. I pass it almost every night. And that's what they did. The elite, the the wise, the wise, the wisdom of this world, the men that are wise that would not accept the 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 teaching also in the antichrist uh, teaching. They don't they don't accept Jesus.